Hey everyone, this is the Tamron 20 to 40 millimeter f2.8 and today I'm gonna to be sharing with you my real world review of this lens. So this is a full frame lens, so I'm gonna be using it on my a7 IV to start off with some photos at our portrait photo shoot. I think we'll start off, if you just stand out here, I wanna try and get like that in the background. Like all my review videos, I have lots of unedited, straight out of the camera photos at 100% crop for you to look at. I'm also going to be sharing some comparison images with other lenses such as Semyang, Sigma, and GM glass at the same or similar focal lengths throughout this video. That's beautiful. Considering its focal length and aperture, this lens is very small and extremely light, weighing 365 grams. This lens is pretty simple. It features a zoom ring, a focus ring, and a USB-C port. As I have mentioned before, I really love that Tamron has incorporated this USB-C port into their lenses for easy firmware updates and customization options. I think it's much better than having to purchase a separate dock. You can customize the focus ring of this 20 to 40, you have the option of changing the rotation direction of the focus ring or changing the manual focus method between linear or non-linear. This lens has a filter thread of 67 millimeters and has weather sealing and the USB-C port is also waterproof. And then I wanted to do one like leaning against that wall. <gasps> yes, that looks so cool there. The images produced from this 20 to 40 are sharp and clear and consistent throughout all focal lengths. I think the colors straight out of camera look very neutral as well, which we usually see and I really like about Tamron lenses. Also, if you're watching the picture in picture, please note that for some reason it glitched out at the beginning of our photo shoot here. I had a medium focus point, but I was making use of IAF this entire time, which for some reason was not showing in the picture in picture. When I switch it over to a wide focus area instead, you'll be able to see IAF again. Sorry about that. Oh, I'll get a full body shot here. Ooh. Maybe one if you just like rest yeah, your hands like mm -hmm. in between. Speaking of IAF, one of the first things I noticed when I started shooting with this lens is how snappy it is. I found IAF is reliable at all focal lengths and was extremely sticky on Laura's eyes. I had an excellent in-focus ratio for this photo shoot. The main focal length I noticed more out-of-focus photos compared to others is when I was taking close-up portraits at around 40 millimeters. Sometimes it would prefer to focus on her eyelashes or just be in general slightly out of focus. In saying that, I still had plenty of usable shots in those sets of photos with focus on her iris as well. So I don't see this as a big issue, but it is something I wanted to mention. I to go across the street to those little banana leaves there. So this is a bit of a wider shot, um, like landscape wise. It looks so jungly. Do you want to try one? If you kind of move around a little bit, you can sort of like swing your arms and I'll try and get some movement shots. Yep. You can look around for these as well if you want. But yeah, that's perfect. Since this is a fast aperture zoom lens, even though it's wide, you are still able to create some nice background to foreground separation for portraits. I think this lens will mostly be used for video and photography genres like landscape, street and travel, which the wide angle zoom is perfect for. However, it can also come in handy to take a few portraits with as well. Even though this starts as an extremely wide lens for portraits at 20 millimeters, I find that this Tamron actually makes portraits look natural and flattering. I don't see any crazy or distracting distortion at any of the focal lengths. You'll especially be able to see this in a little bit when I do a focal length comparison. Yeah, could you please step on, step, sit on the, on the step? Which one? Uh, I think the second one, yeah. Whoa, that looks so cool then. Again, very fairy tale with like the flowers and everything. The bucket of this lens is circular from the center of the frame all the way towards the edges throughout the entire focal range. 
In the photos from our portrait session, the bucket looks really textured, but I think this is because of the location. I took some images on a different day in another location, and you can see the bucket is quite clean. By the way, photos of the bucket, lens layer, chromatic aberration, and other details of this lens are available for you to download in a sample gallery on my blog, so I'll leave a link for that in the description. Something noteworthy that I wanted to mention of this lens is that you can do macro photography with it. At 20 millimeters, the close focus distance is 17 centimeters, which would give you a maximum ratio of one to 3.8. And at 40 millimeters, the minimum object distance is 29 centimeters, which gives you a maximum ratio of one to 5.1. So this lens really is extremely versatile. Oh, it looks really nice. You've got like some light behind you as well. This lens handles chromatic aberration extremely well. On the day of our photo shoot, we had literally one minute of sun pop up while we were taking portraits, so I made sure to take some backlit images. Around the hair where the sun is hitting is usually a prime spot for CA to pop up, but you can't see any in these images. I was only able to find a very minimal amount of purple fringing in these tree branches here that I shot on another day. Overall, I would say this is great performance with CA. During our backlit portraits, I noticed the lens flare produced by this 20 to 40 is quite small, but can possibly pop up in inconvenient areas of your photos. In our case, the lens flare kept falling on Laura's face. Here are some extra lens flare photos. Depending on how you shoot against the sun, the flare can look quite large and prominent. <laughs> We've made the dog angry. Okay, so I want to take a photo with the model and I standing in one spot at every single focal length so I can show you the range of this lens. So with 40, we're going to have like a close up. Okay, so I'm going to start at 20 millimeters. And then I'm going to go to 24 millimeters. And then the next comparison I want to do is move around to make every focal length look the same as each other so we can see the difference in distortion and bokeh. While I think this Tamron 20 to 40 is going to make an excellent all-rounder lens for street photography or travel, landscape, or just as a daily lens, I do believe this is going to make a fantastic lens option for video as well. Dan is capturing these shots of Laura on the Sony a7S III and he is only making use of autofocus so we can make the lens do all the work. Just like photo, this lens is fast at finding focus and keeping focus on our subject, and it's also very quiet. I like what the bokeh in the background looks like in video. Even with Dan and Laura moving around, it's nice to see the bokeh is steady and without any jittering. This was all filmed wide open at f2.8, by the way. The footage looks super sharp, and I think the colors straight out of camera look quite neutral and true to life, just like photo. So I also took this lens out for more video tests to really put it through its paces and see what it's capable of. This lens is really snappy to find focus on the subject with IAF. I have the camera body set to the fastest transition speeds and the fastest subject shift sensitivity. This 20 to 40 does a great job at tracking a subject moving towards the camera at both the 20 end and the 40 millimeter end. This lens is really snappy at finding focus, again, at both ends of the focal range. From my experience and time spent with this lens, I would say the autofocus is very reliable for video. This lens is not parfocal, but I still like to share what it looks like keeping focus while zooming. You can see it does slip focus a couple of times, but quickly finds focus again when you stop zooming. I also, of course, tested out focus breathing and at both the 20 and 40 millimeter end, there is a bit of focus breathing. So 
So I thought this would be a great lens for vlogging and travel photo and video. So that is exactly what we're doing right now. I have the Tamron 20 to 40 on the Sony a7 IV doing video. And we are currently at 20 millimeters and f2.8. So I do have a variable B plus W and D filter on the lens. So these are not the exact colors that you're getting straight out of the lens. For that, you could see them in the photos that we took earlier today. So let's do a little walking shot to see what that looks like. Right now I have my arm up against my body for stability because I don't have the strongest arms to be holding a rig like this. But if I outstretch my arms, you can see quite a lot. So that's really cool. <laughs> and then I want to see what it does when we get a really dramatic like vlogging shot. I'm going to say something super important. So we're going to zoom into 40. Okay, back to talking about normal stuff. Got a haircut in the middle of filming today's video. 40 mils, 20. And I thought I'd switch over to f4.5 as well because I do know when you do travel photography and vlogging, you do want to sometimes have a small aperture so you can see more of the background and the location you're in. So that's what it looks like at 20 millimeters. Oh, my hand's shaking. 20 millimeters at f4.5. And then we'll go into 40. We don't need to see my face that close up, but there you go. <laughs> and when I say heavy, it's not that heavy. It's just heavy for me personally because I'm weak. I'll put the weight of this total rig here on the screen for you. <laughs> So that is all I have for today's review of the Tamron 20 to 40. Let me know what you think of this lens and of the photos and the videos that we captured today. But as always, thank you so, so much for watching. I make new videos every single week, so I'll see you all next time. Bye.